It actually wasn't the 49ers' best football for all four quarters. There was even a, a little while there where the Seahawks were leading. I don't know if you ever felt like the game was actually in the balance or if you always expected the 49ers to win, but definitely um, maybe not the start that – well, they came out and, and scored within 50 50- – something seconds, but mm-hmm. the first half might have go- not have gone how I expected it. How did you expect it to go, and how did you feel watching it? I feel like it went exactly how it was supposed to go. Maybe a little more electric on their side, especially in the second half. I thought it would be a little more grittier, as like we're saying right now. But, yeah, it's funny the way it starts. Like, McCaffrey just rips off that 72-yarder, and it's like, okay, it's going to be one of those games, huh? Because I think we always talk about me and you like, oh, we can just tell when this team's going to be on it and just like literally throttle a team. And it's always based on their first series or two. And it's like, okay, well, here I was thinking like, oh, I'm over here writing saying, hey, this is going to be a tougher outing the last game for the 49ers. So expected to get a little messy, but they'll pull through. And it's like, well, (laughs) there goes their opening drive. They're looking, they're looking freaking phenomenal. But then after that, you left that touchdown on their end, Seattle's in, and it just, it just stales mates for a good, like literally the rest of the half. You know, they pretty much weren't, we're clicking so much. Um, part of that had to do with like Brock Purdy in the first quarter, especially his first three, uh, first four throws. We're just like, what are you doing? Like, you're getting killed. killed. Um, you're throwing man, yeah, it, it looked off. that. Kittle got killed and then went back in the game and immediately got killed again. Yeah, he almost, yeah, he got him killed. He honestly, if, honestly, if Jamal Adams was such a bad player, if he actually played the ball, I mean, played the receiver instead of the ball, he probably was going to whack Kittle. But honestly, that's probably one that Kittle would win because Adams sucks. But, anyways. Yeah, so it was like, okay, is this, we're gonna get like a very shaky Brock Purdy today. Like we haven't seen him for a while, and then after after that after that he just start after that start he just literally lights it up. He had literally three quarters of amazing. I, that probably felt like one of his best games of the season to me because he's just throwing dimes like crazy. I, I feel like from him we saw everything where we saw him deliver from the pocket, we saw him scrambled off script, we saw him deliver thread the middle, uh, thread the ball through the middle to the sideline, thread the ball ran for a first down beautiful like literally everything and that was a per- that literally is a perfect illustration of why what one of the reasons why this offense is so damn good and probably the best offense in the league so yeah in terms of it being gritty it's good you kind of saw that it's like okay they kind of like a tough matchup which a little bit kind of felt like the wild card round last year against seattle right where it's like okay yeah, the first start. half is a little tough um how are you gonna bounce back and they bounce back very nicely and just literally just put their foot on seattle's throat and seattle never really had a chance after that was there like any point in the game where you thought that the 49ers could potentially lose or did you always expect them to kind of like get it together? Cause it yeah. didn't necessarily feel like they were for, for me, I felt like they weren't in their rhythm for the first half. Like it didn't feel like they were doing terrible. It just was like, you were like, okay, wake up, get it together. And so as a, for me, I was kind of watching, waiting for that to happen, but the paranoid side of me is like, oh, what if it doesn't happen all game? What if they just don't have it this game? Yeah. But I don't know if you were able to stay a little more calm and kind of expected them to come back and win at some point. Yeah, I think there was. I had no doubt they weren't gonna loop where they weren't. They weren't gonna win this game. Um, it really fit, again. I'm gonna keep saying this until they play the Baltimore Ravens. The only way this team loses is if they really if if they kill themselves. Really, they are gonna be their own worst enemy. If more than any other team that they're going to face the rest of the way, I feel like it's going to be dictated more on them. So Purdy, take care of the ball. McCaffrey, your fumbles. Anyone else fumbles? Like I, you, you know what? That would have been that would have been a larger score if Ayuk doesn't fumble because they're in perfect perfect field goal range. And I I feel bold enough to say that was going to be a touchdown if he doesn't fumble or the next play. So yeah, even though the score was like two scores, 30, almost three scores. I said thirty four, and they scored. Would it if they would have gotten a touchdown? Would it have been thirty four? Pretty basically, said, yeah. 35. Said 34. It would, I think it would have ended up 35, 30, 35, 30, 16, but whatever. It doesn't, I mean, 28 points. Oh, they didn't score 30, but like it, it felt like it scored 30. And I think that's the one thing about it is that it was impressive to see is like they had a they had a great start on a drive, but then they pretty much tapered off throughout throughout the first half. And then they really picked it up. So that's what that's cool to see is like, hey, against Seattle, they're they don't really need to be 49ers don't have to have an electric all four quarters. They don't need it all to come together that way. You know, it, hell, they didn't have that against the Eagles last week, right? Especially offensively, they didn't have a great four quarters. They had really a great three quarters. And that shows you how good of a team they are. It's like they're not a team where they don't have to be A, A plus, like all four game, all four quarters. They can have like a very average D game, F game for a quarter, maybe even a quarter and a half or a half, and then still come through with it. Because I think they're, they're able to really lock in and not be mentally bent 
or mentally broken to like, well, we're afraid we're down 10, nothing. Like I really feel like that three game losing we saw where they were behind. Like if they were to be in that situation again, I think it would be pretty fine now because I think they're just, I just really think they're focused in on it. I agree. It seems like they've been improving as the year has gone on. Um, Eric Crocker and I were talking about that and he was kind of saying like, he doesn't have evidence yet of them being able to make that fourth quarter comeback. And I was kind of saying just based on their progression of how they've been playing these games versus before the bye week. Cause even when they had that three game slump, like right before that, when they were winning five games, didn't Kyle Shanahan in a press conference say that he was like the most depressed undefeated coach in the league because he felt like even though they were winning that they weren't playing their best football and it seems like they're getting better in the quarters that they're playing better but you're right we haven't really seen them maybe besides outside of that Dallas game play like a full game with their full potential and Mm -hmm. and you wonder if they're going to be able to get that together by the playoffs or maybe if it's something that they'll never need to do because they're so good in in you know three out of four quarters but definitely Definitely interesting. When it comes to Brock Purdy, do, would you consider that like a come from behind because they were winning at some point? Um, or do you think it has to be like a fourth quarter for you to have confidence that he'd be able to do that in the future? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call that come from behind. I mean, especially when it's like, what, they were down like three points or something like that. Like, that's nothing to worry about. I feel like if it's like an actual like touchdown score or even like 10 points, but and then a little later too. Cause honestly, it's like when when it's early in the game, that's why it doesn't matter. Like compared to like even if you threw even if you threw a pick in the first or second quarter, it's like, bro, it's, it's okay if you if you did that because you still have a bunch of other games to really make up for it and make that like a thing of the past. So yeah, I think no, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't a glorified comeback. So that's still a question out there. But like, hey, if you're not in that situation in the first place because you're already so good of a team to to limit the damage and really get ahead, then who cares? I mean, honestly, I was more impressed with him in this game than I was against the Eagles game because what I said, he he, he literally put on display everything that makes him such a good quarterback and with this offense. Like, last week it was overshadowed because how amazing Debo Sammy was and pretty was solid to that game. This one, I was like, okay, no, this guy is freaking amazing. So that he was more impressed in this game. And I get it. It's like, well, Seattle's not the same as the Eagles. It's like, well, it's not like the Eagles have this amazing defense anyways. But yeah, they just got like, blown out in that Dallas game. Yeah. Did you watch Oh god, they got freaking god, they got steamrolled. They got embarrassed. And that, I think it's going to be one thing we're going to look back on is like did the 49ers just start like the downward spiral of the Philadelphia Eagles cuz Yeah. Honestly, I think the Eagles are going to lose one more time, which is perfect for the 49ers cuz that means they could afford a loss cuz you, you just never know cuz things get weird, maybe Arizona, the Rams. Hey, think about this and I was listening Tyler to Murray's back. Yeah, I was th- I was listening to a uh, to a podcast one of one podcast I listened to is Guy Haberman and John Middlecoff and they threw out there like, "Hey, what if we have like a flipped role situation from two years ago where week 18 Rams Niners, one player fighting to get in the wild card while the other, other teams fighting to get the divisional game uh, title. So that might, I mean, for the 49ers, that would probably be what the number one seed while the Rams are trying to get in the playoffs. So that's going to, yeah. that's going to be high stakes too. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just right now. It just feels like all the momentum is on the 49ers side and I have little, there's little reasons to really doubt them. I completely agree. Really quick. I want to, cause we've, 